Metallic paints are a gateway into miniature painting, but a layer of paint and a black or brown wash can be boring. There is so much more we can do with true metallic paints to create better and more interesting miniatures. So let's get into it. I'm starting with a black model. Then on a dry palette, I'm mixing up black metallic paint with a silver metallic paint to create a gun metal gray to dry brush onto the model. If you're already a pro at dry brushing, then skip to the next chapter for the fun part. It is important to use a dry palette when dry brushing as you want your paint to be on the thicker, drier side. I'm rolling my brush into my paint, then removing excess paint using a texture palette. I recommend using a dampening pad to avoid the speckled, dusty application that can sometimes come with dry brushing. This video here talks about my DIY dampening pad and texture palette. With your paint appropriately loaded onto your brush, press your brush against your model with a medium amount of pressure, moving your brush in a circular motion. We want to press hard enough to hit those large flat areas, but not so hard as to reach into the little nooks and crannies. Dry brushing is a great way to add contrast to a model very quickly. Next, I'm creating a 50-50 mixture between my gunmetal gray and my silver doing the same thing as before, but using a softer hand. The goal is to focus more on the raised edges of the miniature. In a way, our pressure is akin to the amount of light that hits the model. Highlights tend to get caught on the edges of elements, and by using a very light hand, we are adjusting how much of an edge we are painting. The lighter the hand, the more pronounced the edge needs to be for our brush to catch it. Lastly, I'm using pure silver on a small domed brush and aiming to only hit the highest, most textured areas. Though I tried my best not to hit other parts of the model with my metallic paint, I wasn't totally successful. So I'm taking a matte medium from Green Stuff World and painting over the areas that are not meant to be metallic. The matte medium doesn't totally take away the metallic shine, but it does help quite a bit. And while you could leave it like this, let's talk about how to make your miniature even more exciting. But first, a word from our sponsor. Today, I'm painting one of the 10 Grand Barons from Evernight Battlegrounds, Court of the Raven King. These gorgeous 75mm display miniatures are available as an exclusive early access opportunity for the Evernight Battlegrounds War Game. Here I'm painting Lycus Silvermane from the Thunderfangs faction, the bloodthirsty leader of an entire werewolf army. Each model and faction is dripping with unique lore, the models are sculpted in exquisite detail, and include a step-by-step -step PDF to paint each model to ensure amazing results. If you want interesting, lore-heavy 75mm models, then these are perfect for you. And if you love miniature strategy games, or just want more amazing miniatures, watch for Evernight's Battleground War Game Kickstarter coming soon. Thank you, Evernight, for sponsoring this video. Back to painting. From here, we have two choices to make this more exciting. We will start with the easier option. For this model, we are using speed paints to add a general tint of color without being too overwhelming. We will start by creating our color mixture. I'm doing five drops of Army Painter Speed Paint Medium to one drop of Tyrian Navy and one drop Periwinkle Purple. I'm applying a layer of Army Painter Speed Paint Medium to one section of the model at a time. With the speed paint medium still wet, I'm then taking my desired speed paint color and painting it onto the area I just placed my speed paint medium. The medium will help evenly disperse the paint into the recesses without creating coffee staining. After some experimenting, I found it's best to use a light hand and not overload areas of your model. To further perfect your applied wash, remove the wash from your brush using a paper towel and gently guide the wash towards the areas you want to be the darkest. Like with any wash or speed paint, you can use a damp brush to sop up excess paint to prevent uneven finish. 
If you mess it up, you can create a 50-50 mixture of your silver and your speed paint to easily cover up any mistakes. To finish it off, you can either add edge highlights using a pure silver or, of course, another slight dry brush of pure silver. You can, of course, do all of this with a wash as well. The really important thing is using that speed paint medium or Lamia medium to help it flow into the recesses. Let's go back to our night and talk about the more advanced but controlled way to apply speed paints to your metallics. I'm pulling my paint down towards the shadows to help darken down those areas for more contrast. Then I'm placing it in the recesses of the armor, near the arms, behind the legs, the underside of the knee, etc. I love using blue and purple in my silver to add that pop of color I like in my models. Since blue and purple are cool tones, they very easily can blend into our silver and still look natural. When you're first learning this, you may need to do multiple layers, but that is totally fine. Better to apply two layers than one layer that is too thick. As you learn, you'll find the perfect ratio to only require one layer of painting. And here's the before and after with our blue glaze. Let's add some gold detailing. I'm using a thicker white metallic paint and using the edge of the brush to highlight the raised edges. The white will act as a great base for our gold, helping the pigments really shine. Once it's dry, I'm applying a gold metallic right over my white. Let's shade it. I'm using a thinned magenta from Army Painter to shade my gold. I love using magenta in my gold. It is my favorite gold recipe. I'm going to paint it using some non-metallic metal techniques. I'm pulling my magenta to the top of the moon on this rondel and the bottom of the moon on the second rondel. For the most part, I'm doing the same as I did when using the blue, pulling the magenta down into the edges of the trim where it naturally be in shadow. Non-metallic metal really comes down to alternating shades of light and dark. Here I'm placing the magenta at the top of the pauldron to add that alternating light and dark. The staple gradation to make something look metallic is dark, light, dark, light, dark. So five in total. For the mace, I'm trying something a little different. I'm using Ancient Honey from Army Painter to tint my dry brushing gold. Then I'm dry brushing a mixture of my previous gold and white onto the mace to catch those sharp edges. To add that non-metallic metal effect, I'm placing the magenta into the curves of the mace and vertical edges. I'm pulling my magenta to the center of the gradient from both sides. You can create a natural gradient with your brush simply by your brush direction. Wherever your brush leaves the model, leaves an extra dollop of paint. So by pulling this brush towards the center, I am assuring that that center area will be the darkest. Lastly, I'm applying my silver metallic paint to the sharp edges of the mace. Adding silver to your gold like this should be used sparingly, as we don't want to change the color of our metal. However, I have found that adding this silver edge highlight really makes those edges pop and makes our model look far more interesting. So what do you think? Am I using speed paints and contrast paints to their full potential? If you like what I do, you know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe. Go join me on Patreon. Thanks so much. I'll see you next time.